Good morning, Tampa Bay. We are continuing to track Hurricane Milton. I'm Heather Lee. And good morning, I'm Dia Riley. Throughout the morning, our crews will be spread out across the Tampa Bay area. They are monitoring the impacts of the storm, which we're already feeling, and we'll also share tips with you to help you stay safe once the storm passes. But first, we do want to send it over to Greg D. He has been tracking this for days now, and that is really what is so different about this storm is that you're going to be tracking it literally up until the moment it makes landfall mm -hmm. because of all of the changes it has been making every step of the way and those little wobbles and hops that the storm will make will make a huge difference because of its close approach to the mouth of the bay. A hurricane moving into the bay causes maximum surge. A hurricane moving in 30 miles south of the bay causes minimal surge and we're at the point where the margin of error is about 30 miles or so. So we could still have that change in track depending on what Milton does, how the eye tracks any wobbles in there. And I do think and I'm just looking at doing the math here. When you look at where Milton is compared to the coast, uh, let's say that the hurricane center forecast is right and it's going to be making landfall at SRQ. So close to the Sarasota Bradenton Airport. It is 166 miles southwest of the coast of Manatee County. It's moving at 16 miles per hour. Do the math. That's 10 hours, maybe 11. This thing is not slowing down in its forward speed. Hurricane Center has a landfall at 2 a.m. That's a huge discrepancy. Now, maybe my math is not perfect. Maybe they see something there, but to have it happen six hours after at its current speed, the math says it should make landfall. I think we're looking at an earlier landfall here, folks, probably earlier in the evening than later into the overnight. Does that change anything? No. I think the storm progressively slowly weakens as it encounters strong upper level shear. I think all the impacts stay the same. Obviously, the tide situation is a little different. If you're closer to 6, 7 o'clock, there are low tides in the bay. But with forecast surges so high, one to two feet of water rise either way because of a tidal cycle doesn't make as big of a difference. It makes some for sure, but it's not going to make a huge difference. So 155 moving northeast at 16 pressure is leveled off. It hasn't taken a dive, which uh, means that at least right now, Milton is not going through any strong strengthening. There's the track of the storm. Don't be shocked by that four. Yesterday, the Hurricane Center had it at 125. That's a strong three. Category three ends at 129. And when they put it at 130 this morning, it just jumps it to category four. The storm is not going to be any stronger than it was forecast yesterday. And in fact, just checking the data, Shea is here. She'll be taken over here for just a second. We just checked the, the models. The Hurricane Center is way above where all the other models are. And they they even said so in their update. They said, we know we're on the high end, but we want folks to be ready for a stronger storm. Most of the data indicates this is going to be somewhere in the cat three category as it makes landfall. That could be a weak category three. It could be a stronger one. Anything above 111. Uh, but I don't think it's going to get any stronger than what the Hurricane Center is thinking. And that's probably the right way to go about this. This is a serious threat for Tampa Bay. We should really prepare for a strong hurricane. This uh, surge forecast was updated as the worst case scenario to eight to 12 feet. 8 to 12 down to Fort Myers, Manatee and Sarasota County 10 to 15. So the part of this surge forecast that I am most confident in is Lido Key South. Sarasota County, you are getting a big surge. Your the wobbles here, I think, really just determine which range of this 10 to 15 you get. Manatee County, the farther north you go, the surge goes down because it'll depend on the point of landfall. And then for the Bay, it's almost an all or nothing situation. If the landfall is down towards Sarasota, Bradenton uh, Airport area or south, there's basically no or little surge in the Bay, at least from the landfall. There may be some water rise tomorrow morning as the winds turn onshore and we head toward a high tide cycle, but it's not going to be anything huge. If the eye goes north, let's say even past Anna Maria, you know, Anna Maria kind of sticks out toward the mouth of the bay. Anna Maria, Egmont, Fort DeSoto, and goes over the Skyway or into southern Pinellas, which is still in that realm of possibility. Well, then that big number is what happens. Uh, you go from almost no surge to the biggest surge we've ever seen in Tampa Bay with that little wobble. And that's why it's so important to watch the track. In terms of when the weather really starts to turn bad, well, 
Tropical storm force winds start entering the coast about two o'clock this afternoon. When you're in this yellow area, it's windy, but it's not dangerous. The wind at this point is not going to be doing a ton of damage. It's just breezy, windy. When a rain band goes by, you might see a gust to 30, 35 or 40. That's fine. You still can get to a safe place at that point. The part of the storm where you really want to make sure that you're inside of uh, for is this orange area. Those are strong tropical storm force winds above 60 because they are very quickly followed by sustained hurricane force winds. And those hurricane force winds in the red there could. Now, this is based on the National Hurricane Center forecast as of 5 a.m. They've got the hurricane force winds coming in at 11 p.m. If the landfall happens at 8 or 8.30, these hurricane force winds arrive 5.30, 6 o'clock, maybe 6.30, depending on where that location is. We would move up the timing on everything. So I think the safe bet to, to say to everyone is you need to be in the place you will be sheltering in for the storm the latest 4 p.m., but probably closer to 2 p.m., that would be the best, safest location. You could probably still get around two to four. It's probably going to be fine. But if you just want to be really, really safe about it, mid-afternoon is probably the best way to do it. Then the storm crosses the state. Hurricane force winds, by the way, to some regard, lower level hurricane force winds will likely follow the center of the storm. The hurricane center thinks this will hold as a category one hurricane off the east coast. So Polk, Hardy, over toward Northern Highlands County, interior portions of Manatee and Sarasota County, Hillsborough, Pinellas County. There will be some folks in all these places that see a sustained wind for a short time as the center passes of 75 to 85 miles per hour with stronger gusts. Updates on that storm throughout the day at Greg D. Weather videos there, graphics I post. If you see something here you want to share, uh, please visit my social media. It's all there right now. So there's the center of the storm. Now there's the coast. We're already getting these nasty rain bands out ahead of Milton. The rain stretches 400 miles ahead of the storm, and this is why we're concerned about the flooding. The storm is not only pulling in moisture from the Gulf of Mexico, but it's also pulling in moisture from the Atlantic, and all of it is funneling into the north part of the storm. Uh, this is the part of the storm that's going to be dangerous for rainfall. By the way, look at this. We've got tornado warnings already happening across uh, I-75 corridor there in the Everglades. Uh, so these are going to spread north. Now, they're south of Lake Okeechobee right now, south of 27. So I think we've got some time before we get into a tornado situation, but we are all under a tornado watch. That's the red box that popped up there on that map. I can go back to it to show you this until 9 o'clock tonight. So that's Pinellas, Hillsborough, Polk County South. Tornado watch until 9, and it could be extended, and it will be pulled farther north, too, as we go through the overnight. The rain will continue. It's going to continue for a while, and it's the totals that really are important here. In this band up here, 10 inches or more is very possible, and that could cause some freshwater flooding. And just to re reiterate where that is, that is not near the center. If the center makes landfall near Sarasota, the heaviest rain and the biggest flash flooding concern will be 40 to 60 miles north of the track not near the center, okay? That's why we don't focus on a center. This is serious. Water, fresh water, just as dangerous as, as any other part of the storm. It'd be great if a lot of that happened when it's still lighter outside, but a lot of this is gonna happen overnight. And you really have to monitor water levels uh, around your property during the overnight. If you live in an area, whether it has flooded in the past or not, you need to be aware whether you are in an area that is prone to flooding or is set up in a, situ in an, in a way where flooding could happen. A drainage ditch in the backyard, the water, uh, a, a dry creek bed, uh, a little stream that really does nothing throughout the year. These things could turn into raging rivers in minutes during situations like this. Why it's so important to keep up with those water levels around your property. By the way, as somebody mentioned this on Facebook, you know, a lot of the debris that we've been putting out on the side of the road, make sure that that is not clogging any drains or is in the way of water draining to those drains. Make sure it is up on the curb and that the water has a free path to those drainage systems. I mean, they are going to get overwhelmed at some point, but we need to make sure that those drainage systems are working at 100% at this point, Dia.